If you are wanting to push your 3D printer to its limits or just know the capabilities of your tool head, finding the maximum volumetric flow rate is a very useful metric. Most modern slicers will allow you to input this value into the printer's profile as a hard cap. This will prevent the slicer settings from attempting to push more filament through your hot end than it can handle, which would lead to under extrusion. I'm wrapping up my Mercury 1.1 and Hydra conversion, and I have not flow tested the Orbiter V2 with the Revo 6 tool head. In today's video, we will go through the process that I've been using to test the maximum volumetric flow, as well as a new one that I've really been enjoying using that simplifies the process. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Finding the maximum flow is something I only started doing a couple of months ago as I've begun trying to push my 3D printers a little bit more. The method I've been using primarily is the extrusion benchmark created by Stefan over at CNC Kitchen. He showcased this tool about a year ago which helped to speed up the manual process of extruding one blob of filament at a time which would then be measured. Stefan's tool was built into an Excel spreadsheet, which was then ported by iFall Uphill into an awesome web app that really makes generating that test G code simple, and it's what I've been using. To use the tool, you simply enter in your printer's bed size along with a few printer specific parameters. Then you set the start and end flow rate along with the start and end temperatures that you want to run for your tests before downloading the generated G code. Then simply run that G code on your printer. In Clipper, if you're getting errors during the printing, you may need to add a max extrude cross section and a max extrude only distance under your extruder in your printer.cfg. For each temp and flow rate, the printer will purge a line of material and then create a blob next to it until all of the flow and temp combinations have been printed. To check each blob of filament, you will need a milligram scale. I've been using a fairly inexpensive one that I've picked up over on Amazon that I've been quite happy with. So if you do need a scale, I will have links down below in the description over to the one that I've been using. When weighing each extrusion, I create a table that has the volumetric flow rates and the temps that I tested so I can fill in each cell. I really like that this method gives you a numerical value that allows you to easily see any drop off that's happening in the flow. Having a hard number is also very nice for creating graphs, and I feel like this translates well when showing something over videos, since the numbers are not really open to interpretation. However, for someone that is curious about their own printer, the measuring can be a bit tedious and might not necessarily tell the whole story. Yes, you can see the percentage of drop off from the blobs, but you can't actually see how that may or may not affect your part quality. For function, I would argue that no drop off in extrusion is wanted. However, if you are printing a part that's not going to be under load or is non-functional, the finished parts look might actually be the most important factor. For this, the method that I have been using and really enjoying comes baked into the Bamboo Studio Soft Fever Fork. The Soft Fever Fork of Bamboo Studio comes with quite a few upgrades, including much more third party printer support, further printer control, a preview window that lets you see your printer's web interface, and a host of calibration tools. Many members in the Modbot Army Discord have been recommending the slicer to me for some time now, and after diving into it, I definitely see why. For anyone unfamiliar with this slicer that is interested, Teaching Tech recently dove into it, and that video is a really good place to start. Shortly after the release of that video, an update to the slicer came out, and with it came a handful of new calibration tools. The one we are interested in is the Max Flow Rate Volumetric Speed Test. Using this calibration tool is very simple. In the slicer, head up to the top menu and click Calibration, More, and Max Flow Rate. This will open a dialog window where you will need to enter a starting flow rate, an ending flow rate, and a step to increase by. The start and end flow rate range that you'll want to use will vary depending on the hot end that you're testing. For my tool head, I'm using the E3D Revo 6, which is not a high flow hot end. I went with a conservative 8 cubic millimeters per second starting point and an ending point of 16, which is above what I'm expecting it will be able to output. If you have a high flow hot end like something like a Volcano or a Rapido, you'll want to bump up both your starting and your ending flow rates. Click OK to apply your values and the slicer will generate your test file. The model used is a remix of Stefan's extrusion test structure. Looking at the side of the model, we can see lines that will help us know the flow rate used at a given height on the model. If you kept the 0.5 default step, each line will represent an increase of one cubic millimeter per second from your starting point to your ending value. In our case, below the bottom notch is our eight cubic millimeters per second, 
and above the top notch will be our 16 cubic millimeters per second. If we go to the preview window and we change the color scheme to flow, we can see a colored representation of the increasing flow. At this point, all that's left to do is send off that file to be printed. The time it's going to take will depend heavily on how large of a range that you're going to be testing. For the Mercury 1.1, going from the 8 to 16, it was roughly a 20 minute print. You also don't have to let the entire print finish. If it gets to a point where you're just seeing lots of under extrusion and the quality just looks bad, you know that it's not going to be successful the more it increases from that point onward, so you can just stop the print early. When the print completes, the easiest way to see the extrusion consistency is to angle the part towards the light. This will allow you to see where there is under extrusion or other imperfections. For the Revo, using the lines as a reference, the extrusion looks great up until 14 cubic millimeters per second. At 15, there were obvious imperfections and roughness on the part. To play it safe, I decided to cap the flow rate of this hot end to 13 cubic millimeters per second. With this value, I can set the maximum flow in the Soft Fever Slicer under the filament settings. In Prusa Slicer or Super Slicer, this value is located under print settings and speed. For Cura, I did some digging in the slicer and searching around online, and it does not look like this feature is currently available. Knowing the max flow of your tool head will allow you to adjust things in the slicer to not go above it, but having it be automated is a really nice plus. And that has been how to calibrate your 3D printer's maximum volumetric flow. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you now have a much better understanding of a few of the tools that are available. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below and I will do my absolute best to answer them. Also, I would love to know in the comments if you have a specific calibration method or calibration tool that you like using when you are setting up a printer's profile and just getting things tuned. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel, furthermore, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.